Jerry Wasserman is an actor, professor, writer, and theater critic who is passionate about the performing arts, film, and high drama on TV and off. Every once in a while, we lure him away from his academic retreat at UBC to pay us a visit. It is my pleasure to welcome Jerry Wasserman back to Studio 4 to tell us more. My pleasure to be here. Yes, I want what you have got. Do you want what I have got? Yes, I do. <laughs> that was, well, let's go back. Yes, let's, let's back go back up. to opening night. Mm -hmm. Fanny Kiefer and Jerry Wasserman in the, in the lobby of the Review Theater on Granville Island. A mm -hmm. buzz about this new show put together by Bill Richardson and Veda Hilly based mm -hmm. on ads in Craigslist. I know. Interesting concept. Yes, kind of, Bill know. was here talking about it, and I thought, well, it sounds sort of good. It sounds sort of good. Guess yes, I should go. Yes, yes, Craigslist, gimmicky. Mm -hmm. It was phenomenal. I know. It is phenomenal. It's one of the, the smartest and most uh, technically sophisticated pieces of musical theater that I have seen in mm -hmm. decades, I'd say. Well, I was thinking, I'm in New York. Not yeah. that Vancouver Theater isn't swell. It is. But uh, the whole thing, I mean, how can you not laugh when somebody's, uh, you know, advertising stuffed penguins and silly cat hats yeah. and yeah. all of that? And it's a musical. Yes. And the content is, is amusing. You know, they, mm -hmm. they choose, they've chosen the kind of oddball things that people advertise on, on Craigslist, as well as the personals. A lot of it is about the personals. Yes. Um, but uh, what I, th I thought they did amazing, well, first of all, Bill Richardson's a genius when it comes to writing that kind of mm -hmm. satirical mm -hmm. uh, 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 song. Um, I thought that it was, uh, it balanced this kind of silly comedy and uh, more serious drama really nicely. You know, all the lonely yes. people who put out their... I thought of that, I mean, all the lonely people. Exactly, yeah. Da -da -da -da. On the bus, I saw you on the bus. Did you see me? Did you see me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was in the Starbucks. I may have been the one. But what really made it for me, and the performances were really terrific, yeah. the four performers, but what really made, the, uh, it, uh, made it special for me were the musical arrangements. I think Veda Hilly is just a genius with a capital G. Yeah. I mean, you know, I looked up, <laughs> I have to say, had to look up <laughs> cantata, <laughs> and um, Wikipedia told me all about, you know, box cantatas and how it's this kind of sophisticated, um, a musical form that's often mm -hmm. been used for sacred music and it involves reprises and mm -hmm. all kinds of sophisticated um, technical musical things. And I, I went back a second time to see do you have what I have, do you want what I have got? Because I missed so much of the dialogue for one thing. Right. But, um, and I really paid attention to just the, the musical arrangements, the way certain musical themes were brought back in, motifs, the complexity of the, of the music itself, the harmonies, the way she had arranged the harmonies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, I say wow. It's well, a obviously wow show. we it's liked held it. Over, it's held over for another week at the Review Theater, so it's running now until February 18th, and I'm sure it will have a life beyond the Push Festival. Let's hope. Uh, if not, we'll uh, produce it on Broadway. We, hey, there's an idea. Could be our, uh, <laughs> our next adventure. Yes. Why there not? goes the pension. There goes the pension. <laughs> so workshop, uh, it started as a workshop, went on to be uh, a, a longer, but it's 80 minutes. Sit down, enjoy yourself, have a great time. Now, um, uh, were you at, um, was it Mary Margaret O'Hara? Uh, I was Who was singing when uh, Norman Armour collapsed? Oh, who was the head uh, of the PUSH Festival? Yes, I wasn't there. So Norman Armour, who's the executive director of PUSH, was at, uh, and he's a very um, driven guy. He's yeah. built this from this tiny little nothing festival into a, a really remarkable international mm -hmm. event. And uh, so he was at a musical event as part of the PUSH Festival on Saturday night, and he had a heart attack. No. And uh, I just heard some details yesterday. Apparently, he's still alive. He, well, he is not only still alive, but he's doing very well. Fortunately, because he was at that event, someone raced into the room and said, are there any doctors in the room? And it turned out that there were two doctors and an emergency room nurse. And they gave him Im immediate CPR. The ambulance was there in four minutes. His heart stopped twice, apparently, on the way to the hospital. Uh, they did the defibrillation in the ambulance. And he had an angioplasty within an hour. Wow. And He's meant to be here, that boy. Exactly. If so, if it had happened somewhere else in his car or something, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, first Norman. symptom often is sudden death. So, uh, good for him, and yep. we wish him well. Uh, now, what else is going on? Let's talk about Videomatica before we go to okay. more theater. Okay. 
what uh, Videomatica little store in Forth. Yes, the Not little, little video store. Little video could. store that had like some shishi films. Well, it had not some only documentaries. Some it had lots. I mean, lots. Videomatica was founded in 19, started up in 1983 by two UBC grads, uh, Graham Pete and uh, mm -hmm. Brian Bosworth, and it, you know, they turned it into sort of the anti-blockbuster. It was the place that you went for movies that you couldn't find mm -hmm. elsewhere. Obscure foreign films, silent films. Uh, yeah, My Dinner with Andre. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> and, and even more obscure things like that. Canadian films that had just been at the festival and mm -hmm. had gotten re released in a tiny little you know, 100 DVDs mm -hmm. uh, and would disappear if okay. they hadn't had it as part of their collection. So, like Blockbuster, you know, the, the video rental business was on its last legs. Mm -hmm. Their lease uh, in, uh, at the store on 4th Avenue was going to be up at the end of October this past year, and they decided it was time to bail, time to get out of the business. What are they going to do with their 35,000 DVDs and, and VHS tapes? So they started poking around and uh, decided, first of all, that they wanted to try to sell it as a collection. They thought as a collection it had real value mm -hmm. and real meaning. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are only so many kinds of places that would be interested in that. And also a lot of people were skeptical, including me, DVDs, you know, it's, al it's already an outmoded f technological form. Couldn't you get all these movies on, you know, net Video on Netflix? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video on demand, Shaw only. Well, turns out you can't. Even at Shaw, video on demand, mm -hmm. you can't get a lot of the things that are oh, the in more this collection. obscure, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, they came to UBC and they said, "Would you like? Would you be interested in this?" And yes, was the the very quick answer, both from um, the film scholars in my department, theater and film, and the UBC library and the dean of arts. And so we put together a little package of money and we put it on the table. And, and the Video America guy said, well, this isn't quite enough. And we said, well, we, this is as much money as we can put on the table. And so uh, it looked like it was going to fall apart. And uh, Yosef Wask stepped in, great man. When he steps in, it's a good day. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day for everybody. And he basically brokered a deal. He brought in Simon Fraser. And so the Simon Fraser Library it was, uh, came in for a piece of it. He also mm -hmm. put his, some of his own money on the table to pay, to pay for a, an assessment of the collection, because so, nobody knew how much it was actually worth. Turns out to have been worth about 10 times what we were going to pay for it. And in the end, a deal was made on the basis of the cash that we had plus a tax receipt, because when you donate it to a university, it's right. a charitable sure. donation. And so uh, everybody was happy with the deal. And, uh, so SFU has 2,800 uh, documentary DVDs, and UBC has about 32,000 DVD and v VHS mm. uh, So if uh, I films. want one to see one of those, can I go there? Aye, Do there's I, the rub. How does it oh, well, see? The, well, the, well. It, it's, they're now sitting in, uh, in uh, filing cabinets in the basement of the UBC library waiting to be cataloged. Okay. So Videomatica had its own cataloging system, but it's nothing like the cataloging system of a university library. So the librarians mm -hmm. have to go through them one by one, okay. and they have to re. So it'll be right. they estimate two to three years before uh, the collection will be actually be the accessible. The point is uh, saved. It's saved, saved and saved as a collection. Happy ending. And it will be publicly uh, accessible as well as accessible for study. Okay, now let's go to Julius Caesar. Oh well, from the contemporary <laughs> to the <laughs> Why Roman. Why not? Yeah. So Studio Fifty Eight uh -huh. uh, is doing a production of Julius Caesar. Not. Oddly enough, it's one of the plays that, you know, we all read in grade 11, but it's hardly ever done uh, on stage. Yeah. It's not actually one of the best plays that Shakespeare wrote, except it's got all those famous lines, a tu mm. bouté, and, I remember you know, that beware one. of the Ides of March. But beware it, of the Ides of March. Conspiracy, murder, and chaos, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it kind of sounds like your show. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, you never know.